Let's look at some tactics that you can use in FTL to reduce the damage that you take, especially in the early part of the game while you still only have one shield. I'm going to be using a mod called Combat Sims which I made for demonstrating this. Uh, there's a link in the description below so if you want to try out any of these things for yourself just go ahead and download that mod. In this episode we'll look at ion dodging. I'm going to start with a simple example where we have an ion blast and a mini beam. Now this ion blast is firing at 8 seconds and this mini beam is firing at 12 so if we don't do anything special the ion blast is going to hit our shields and then the mini beam will do damage. Just like so. So what we can do instead is lower our shields to let the ion hit our ship. Now we could still take damage if this ion is targeted at the shield's room, but most likely it's targeted somewhere else on our ship. I'm going to wait for it to fire a little bit and then raise the shields. So the ion got inside our ship before the shield came up and the mini beam is not going to do any damage. And we need to do that again on the second volley. Uh, where this is firing at 16 and this is firing at 12, uh, sorry, 24, but on the third volley these are firing at the same time so we can ignore it. And now the fight has reset. We're back to the start effectively. We dodge this, maybe it does no damage, and so on. We can also do this against an iron blast and a basic laser. Now this is a little bit more difficult because this fires at 8 seconds and this fires at 10. There's only a 2 second gap. Uh, but with good time you can still do it. Wait for the iron to fire, raise the shield. Ion gets inside the shield barrier and the shield comes back up before the basic laser hits. And then this is firing at 16 and 20 so it's a pretty easy dodge here. And what's the next one? 24 and 30. So we can keep doing this for a while. Now here's where it gets a bit more interesting. We have an ion blast and a heavy laser. So this fires at 9 seconds. In vanilla FTL you should let this hit because it will get there before the ion blast, at least the vast majority of the time. Just wait and see. You see here's a heavy laser, it breaks our shield and then the ion comes in. Now on the next volley we have 8 uh, sorry, 16 and uh, 18, so it's similar to the basic laser one, except this is a bit faster to travel to your ship. The timing is a little bit tricky. And there you go. And then what's next? 24 and 27 and so on. Now where it gets interesting is if you're running balance mod, which I'm just going to switch to right now. Now in balance mod these weapons fire at exactly the same time. The only thing that's changed is that the ion projectile travels slightly faster. Twinge uh, normalized the speeds of all of the different ion projectiles. Some of them in the base game are 30 and a few are 40. In balance mod they all travel at speed 40. What that means is that if we do nothing this enemy has become a lot more dangerous because uh, the ion is actually likely to hit first. Here we go and I take damage. Now I've reset the fight and it is actually possible here to dodge this ion. You just need really good timing. Uh, it's important to note here that I have no one in the shields room because that's actually going to mess up my timing. Uh, if you have crew manning the shield system then the shields will recharge slightly faster. What I'm going to do here is watch this ion blast very closely. And I'm trying to hit it just when the animation cycles. This kind of pausing, by the way, I'm using the space bar and the middle mouse button together. There we go. So it's just started to animate, put my shields back up, and I should just avoid that heavy laser. And here's another example where we have different behavior on vanilla FTL and balance mod. This is just vanilla FTL. Uh, the ion stunner is firing at 10, the mini beam is firing at 12. Uh, so this mini beam is actually gonna start firing before the ion hits our shields. Just wait for it, there. And what that means is that when the ion takes down our shields, uh, whatever room this is currently in, whatever room it's targeting, is not going to take damage. It might still do another one or very occasionally two damage to other rooms, uh, but it's not going to do the damage to the room that it started targeting. Like so. So it was targeting weapons there. Uh, worth noting here that the room that the minibeam drags towards 
is less likely to be a uh, room that you don't want hit due to how the targeting mechanics work. And it's going to hit cloaking here. Uh, but we only took one damage. And now we're back in balance mod. And again, this ion stunner projectile speed has been increased from 30 to 40, which means it is likely to hit first. Uh, not always. The timing here is sufficiently close that it actually depends on the angle that the ion comes in at and even the size of your ship's shield barrier. Uh, but we're going to drop our shields. And I want to wait for it to just be cycling. Now the optimum time is actually just about there. We have a small gap between the ion and the weapon. And then turn the shields back on. Again with no one in the shields room. That's the easiest way to measure this. And it's ever so close. You see the mini beam is just about to fire. Uh, and we did it. Now we can take this a step further um, when you have the weapon further back. So this iron weapon here is all the way back there, so it's going to take longer to reach our ship. And because the timing here is so tight, it can actually make a difference. We still use the same timing, but we just don't know for sure whether it's going to work. If it doesn't work, then we haven't lost anything, provided you don't wait too long to raise your shields watching this very closely. And a little bit more. Okay, this is about the maximum. And let's see. Just about perfect. This is so close that it's actually unlikely to work ever on the NG cruisers because their shield is so small it will take the ion longer to get to them. It does sometimes work but it's pretty uncommon. We can also use the same technique to dodge a laser. Now in this case we have a basic laser and a mini beam so the basic laser fires at 10 seconds the mini beam at 12 and the basic laser only does one damage. If we don't do anything this is going to hit our shields and then the mini beam will likely do two damage. So we could let the basic laser inside the shield. Let's just look at how to do it mechanically first. You can just wait until it turns green by pausing very carefully. But an easier way is to count the lights on the laser. It has four stages where it lights up and then a fifth stage when it fires. So it works like this, zero, one, two, three, four, and fire. So I'm pausing just as it's about to fire and I turn on my shields. Laser gets inside, it does actually hit our weapons. Uh, something I want you to note here is that even if I fire the Artemis, it's not going to reach their weapons before the mini beam fires. So in this case, um, this was actually quite a good tactic because we had a shield buffer. I wouldn't generally recommend this tactic, uh, since if that basic laser were to hit shields, then you'd be taking the full damage from that and the mini beam, uh, and potentially the mini beam could hit shields as well, and your shields could be down for a long time, especially if they get set on fire or something. Um, so this tactic is definitely situational. And here's an example where I actually don't recommend using this tactic. Um, because this ship, unlike the previous one, is not manning its weapons. And that means that we can probably take them down using an Artemis missile. The basic laser will fire first, but the mini beam probably doesn't get to fire. And we'd also use a burst laser here, of course. There you go. So we took no damage. I'd rather take zero damage than one damage. Up until now, we've been looking at examples where you only have one shield. Uh, but these techniques can also be used later in the game. In this case we have an Ion Blast and a Heavy Laser 2. Uh, so if all of these shots hit, we will take 2 damage from one of the Heavy Lasers. I can drop my shields, bring them up again, and the Heavy Laser 2 is just going to bounce off the shields. For the second volley, we can let the Ion hit. I'm actually just going to disable my engines here. And the shields will be up in time. But for the third volley, we actually can't dodge this. Not on vanilla FTL. And there we took two damage. If we switch back to balance mod again, this example gets a whole lot more interesting and also really difficult to explain, but I'll do my best. What we can do this time is avoid not just the first volley from the heavy laser, but also the second volley. 
by dodging the third ion. Now this is going to need really good timing, uh, but it is possible at least some of the time. The first couple of uh, ion blast volleys are exactly the same, we just dodge the first one, let the second one hit. Um, but for the third volley, we're going to need to start a crew member in shields. Um, now what I want to do here is use this crew member's skill, this is a fully trained shields crew, to bring the second shield barrier up faster, because that is actually necessary for this trick. However, by having someone in shields it actually messes up my timing on uh, this aisle. I want to use the same timing that we saw with the heavy laser one. But I have a way around that. First I'm going to depower the shields. And then, just like before, we're going to wait for this Ion Blast 1 to animate. There we are. And we put the shields back on. Now, if I leave this crew in the room, they're going to mess up my timing. So I'm just going to walk them out of the room. But then I want them to come back into the shields room exactly when the first barrier is up, so that we can recharge the second barrier as quickly as possible. And the way to do that is to look at the shield charge bar up here. We're going to let that fill halfway up, like this. That's about right. Then we bring them back into the room. It takes them the same amount of time to walk back as it took them to walk out. So they should reach that console exactly as the first shield barrier comes back up. And then they'll immediately start manning it. So if all goes well, we will just get those up. And in fact, one of those missed, but notice it missed at the shield barrier. So we did have both shields up in time to block the heavy laser too. Um, this trick doesn't work all the time. It depends on the size of your ship's shield barrier, and it also depends on the angle that shots come in at. If you're using an NG cruiser, it's pretty unlikely that you'll get this to work, but you haven't lost anything provided you bring your shields back up in time. Now the other thing to note here is that this ship is not manning their weapons system. So if they had crew in here or if it was an automated ship they had the manning bonus this just isn't going to work and here's another example of a two shield dodge uh, we are back on vanilla ftl again and this time we have a burst laser two uh, now you can dodge this even without crew in the shields room it is better to use crew in the shields room because it means you can wait a little bit longer on this ion blast and make sure it gets inside your shield barrier even if it comes in at a really bad angle uh, but we're going to do it without any crew in the room And we want to make sure that the shield comes back up in time to block the second burst laser 2 shot here, uh, which it does in fact. It is better to block the second shot uh, rather than just the third shot. It gives the most chances of enough shots missing, effectively. Uh, and now, if this ship was not manning their weapons and if we had fully trained crew, we could actually let this ion hit and the shield would be back up in time for the burst laser 2. Uh, but because this ship is manning its weapons, we're not going to do that. We're going to dodge this one as well. Uh, and that just makes sure that we have the least chance of taking damage. Now, these are both firing at 24 seconds, which means the fight has reset. And that's all the ion dodging I have for you. I hope you found that useful. And in the next episode, we'll be looking at Zoltan ion shielding.